I took a piece of clear plastic, as big as my piece of land, took an original trench map and kind of worked out where it would fit and I plonked it down. And as far as I'm concerned, this one thing here is on the edge of railway wood near Hooger on the outskirts of Ypres. British trenches are, if anything, over-engineered and really they have a look of their own. If you excavate a trench, as I do archaeologically, you know as soon as you hit a British trench because you've got the wrinkly tin, you've got the upright steel posts. While we were working, people would come to the fence here and bring us cups of teas and things. So they knew we could hardly hide a trench system. We're not going to say, oh, we really, really understand the Great War, but what we understand is the individual experience and how complicated it actually was. The most dreadful thing about it, it was just exhausting. If you get three or four hours sleep a day, you're doing well. You're sleeping in the afternoon, you're working all night, you're nocturnal. If it's wet, you're wet. If it's cold, you're cold. If the trenches are full of mud, then your feet get soaked. And it's just a point where you've got bone numbing coldness. I mean, yes, you might get shot, you might get blown up. But for the most of these guys, it was just that tedium of being exhausted, of being wet, of the food being boring, and just the constant labour to keep these things in one piece. I built this to try and demonstrate to a modern generation about the nuts and bolts of warfare in the Great War.